Gary Talks. I am so excited about this learning series that I am creating. Um, and I just wanted to give a overview of what to expect in the coming month of June. Because I'm doing this for the month of... I mean, I'm going for as long as I need to, but I'm anticipating June to be it. So, I want to just start off with slavery. Um, even with that, it's a little hard to figure out when I want to start, right? Because 1518, Charles, King Charles I of Spain, I want to say, he decreed that slavery was legal. Like, you could transport slaves directly from Africa to the Americas instead of having to stop in Spain and bring them back, right? So, that's when it became easier. So, we can cite that as a moment. Um, American slavery, because Americas doesn't mean like the US of A that we think about now. Americas is also South America, which is where the Spain were going. If you think about Brazil and all of Latin America, I mean, they were colonized by the Spanish. Um, but in 1619 is officially when the first 20 slaves arrived, I want to say in Jamestown in America. So if we want to talk about slavery in America, specifically like where we live, so we can say 1619 is when that started, right? So... I want to follow the thread of slavery through to the Civil War, through to Reconstruction, through to Jim Crow. That's essentially the overview. Why are those times important? I'm glad you asked. So to me, I think slavery is crucial to understanding the cognitive dissonance. And, and I say this a lot, but cognitive dissonance means holding two thoughts to be true. Like, um, I'm a fair and equal person. But if you have green hair, I do not like you and I do not fuck with you. So how do you hold those two beliefs to be true? Right? So then you would define when I mean to a, a, blue, a green haired person, that means that you did something. It wasn't me because I'm a, I'm a fair and just person. That's what cognitive dissonance is. It's having these two thoughts and you're trying to make sense of the two at the same time, but they don't make sense. So the reason I say there's cognitive dissonance in America and in the founding of it is that in 1776, we out here like, land of the free, home of the brave, all men are created equal, back off of me, England. Upon signing that document, Thomas Jefferson went back to Sally Hemming, his slave at home. And countless of other founding fathers and leaders went home to their slaves, even though they were also slaves fighting in the revolution. So they didn't even have to go home. I'm sure the slaves were even present in the signing. Who you think was bringing the pen to them? <laughs> they not walking. So point being, you've built a country with other people, right? Because if we're talking about just in terms of your, your business and your farming, it would not have been possible without these people that you brought over to do these things. But then when you're signing a document about freedom, they're not a part of it. Do you think that could lead to problems? That's all I'm gonna say, right? So then I wanna follow that dissonance, that justification. So if all men are created equal, but you're not equal, so you must not be a man. Okay, got it. That's how they did it, right? They defined African-Americans and others eventually out of manhood out of what it meant to be a man right because if, if we're being real and we know i don't need to tell you this like this is not, this is something that i think we all know as american history like a, a, a real person was considered a white land-owning man who was like 35 years old that was what all men that's what a man was because when they were talking about all men were created equal they were certainly not talking about women either they was literally just talking about the man in the room the men in the room we were created equal the rest of them i don't know about them so I want to talk about that dissonance and really f I want us to sit and feel that so I'm going to talk about that and I'm also going to touch a little bit on the effects of slavery on Africa that's not my focus that's a whole separate colon Ooh, the colonization over there is a different conversation but it did affect it so I want to touch on that but mostly again just focusing right here on America it's very hard to just focus on America because we are intertwined and freaking got our fingers in every pot but Bear with me, okay? Then I want to follow it into the Civil War, right? To the Civil War, we don't, like, even in, in my school, when I first learned about it, stuff, we never really talk about it as, like, wait a second, people were really just fighting about people over profits, or profits over people, and honoring the fact that the South was very angry because their entire economy was built on slavery. They ain't never worked a day in their life. So, of course, 
when the system is about to fall, this peculiar institution is being demolished, they're going to be upset about it. But they were so upset that they almost seceded. They almost left this union. This organization, this collection of states, they were about to leave because they couldn't do what they wanted to do anymore. Because someone was talking, I think, and the thing is, like, yeah, Abraham Lincoln wasn't, he's not a saint. He wasn't freeing the slaves because he cared about African Americans and African people. He was trying to save the Union. Stay united. And that's the thing I think is really at the heart of this, too, in addition to the cognitive dissonance. Why we kept the South, they didn't want to be here. They did not want to be here. They did not want to do the things that we wanted to do. They did not want to be a part of this union. They wanted to do what they wanted to do, which was have people and profits. <laughs> have people as profits to make their profits. Like, so that's a whole nother moment. And then you would think now that, you know, families have turned against each other and entire country is in strife. We would actually talk about this peculiar institution of slavery. What does it mean? Why did we do that? How do we move forward? No, 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 no. Re during Reconstruction, we just going to, the South is going to be mad and continue to murder blacks at outrageous numbers. There's this report of the South. I have to look for it and put it on the resource list. This dude walking through the South seeing bodies everywhere because... The Af they were mad. Oh, Africans, y'all free now? Well, free to die. So, the reason Reconstruction is important is because during Reconstruction, when we're supposed to re re be rebuilding a nation that has been ravaged by slavery and by hatred, now we're building Jim Crow into it, which is the caste system that America has, separating based on race. So it's legal and social. Being like colored people can't come over here is a legal thing, right? It's written on a piece of paper and there's like repercussions. You will go to jail or face what other consequences. And also it's an attitude. If I see you over here, even... That's going to lead me into the next piece, which is um, after Reconstruction and Jim Crow into the Civil Rights Movement. Because the Civil Rights Movement was essentially calling for the end of Jim Crow. Like, can we stop this like overt, blatant racism in our face? And the reason I chuckled a, a moment ago is because when you take something away from the overt, it's not like it disappears, it becomes covert. Because you, when you say no blacks allowed, like coloreds only, whites only, I can see how you feel. I see it. But then when I take away the sign, and now I'm walking into this neighborhood, right? There's no sign, so I should be able to be here, but everybody looking at me like. Now, I don't have a word for that, right? Cause I'm like, it doesn't say whites only, so why are they looking at me like this? And the violence that would still come after Jim Crow was abolished, right? Cause the KKK was, is a real thing. So, my point in tracking all of this is not just to like depress us and have us sit and be like, wow, such a terrible history we have. Also, yes. But mostly it's because I think a lot of the time when we think about slavery and we think about history and we talk about history, it's all just very like intellectual. Yeah, this happened, this happened, that happened, this happened to justify all these things. But have we ever taken the time to really sit and feel back into that time? What must it have felt like? on oppressors and and oppressor oppressed end i don't really care about the oppressor's feelings but also we have to understand their motivations and their what was happening and maybe we don't have to like and this is the thing that i feel like you don't have to understand something to accept it right it's just like this is the this is a big problem that we have people are like i don't understand gayness so i don't accept it that doesn't that's not how it works you don't have to understand something to accept it because we can accept that anti-black slavery or anti-black racism is a result of slavery that it has fucked up our country and fucked up a lot of people <laughs> and inter and relations between people but we don't understand that so i would like for us to understand that and that's kind of what this whole thing is about yeah i think we all need a better understanding of the facts that are at hand for us um, obviously, because, you know, we're, we're literally moving through this world where the brain named itself. We're all seeing, like, shadows that are being interpreted into images because it's literally just electrical impulses and stimulus. So, I get it. 
you know, I've went through my huge nihilistic existential phase, nothing matters, this and that, but also we live in this world together, so can we make it decent, please?